Welcome back to the PCC, the Prime Championship Circuit, where we showcase and highlight competitive predecessor gaming. This is PCC 7. Both of these teams we're about to watch have put in the work with the amount of scrims and the immeasurable amount of hours they've put in mastering every hero in their respective roles, training themselves in the ins and outs of predecessor gameplay. They've come so far and we're oh so close. Who can claim the title of PCC champion? Who is the best? Who will be a part of the elite and be able to wear the crown of PCC champion? Dirty Lake and the boys or indecisive? Please, before we get too ahead of ourselves, this is the grand finals. Please join me in welcoming our top desk analysts. We'll start off with Easy Ed, three-time world fault champion, all the way from North Dakota and captain of the implication pontoon. How are you, Ed? I'm good, I'm good, happy to be back. And of course, over here on my right, we've got Wangle, the Wangler, the one with the killer smile and torn between two worlds apart. How are you, Wangle? If I wasn't hype already from all the games I've been watching today, I'm hyped now after that intro. I'm so ready to get into this. I am so ready as well. Let's dive right into both of these teams. We've got the bracket right in front of us. Both of these teams have made it so far. And now we've got Dirty Lake and the boys versus Indecisive in this best of five in the grand finals. We got to see some numbers. They made it all the way from the Swiss, the groups, and of course, the, the quarters and the semis. Ed, what are you seeing on the screen here? I'm seeing a heavy side of KDA over on Indecisive compared to D-Lab. I mean, we, we saw it last game. Neft is just a monster and a half. He can control a game by just staying in his lane and farming the way he does. Um, objectives, it's pretty similar overall, you know, with maybe just a little bit more Indecisive side. But again, Indecisive played out of their mind last game. Uh, it, this is going to be a really, really close one. It definitely will be. What are you seeing for most banned and most picked there, Wangle? Uh, most banned, we're seeing Chimera and Argus, Indecisive, wanting to get the Argus off the table. Very good pick type of hero. D-Lab, the Chimera bans, um, I feel like it's just a jungler that's very aggressive. I don't think Import, uh, I don't know how much he's played it. I know he will play it, uh, but I don't think it's one of his necessarily staple picks in this tournament so far. And then we're also seeing Drongo as the most picked for D-Lab. No surprises to anyone there. Character's been in pretty much every game so far in the finals. Um, and then the Bellic on the side of Indecisive. Uh, very good flex for them. Mankyu used to be a mid laner, so he's very used to the Bellica pick in the support role. And Shin, it's, he's a demon on it. One of the best Bellicas I've ever seen. Both of these teams just know how to play the video game. But we're talking about imports and the jungle. He's one of the heroes that he was able to bring up and play here in the PCC is the Crunch. And when you're talking about the jungle, the jungler on the other side, we've got D-Lab, who also knows how to play the Crunch. What are you seeing on the screen here, um, Ed? I mean, with the ban rate of zero, no one really, I mean, it seems like no one really cares about the crunch, but if you look at the win rate, it's almost a nice 69%. Uh, he's he's controlling the games, it looks like. So crunch is just a menace in his own way. He's very flexible in the off lane or in the jungle. He's just a menace through and through. So I would love to see a ban maybe at this point here, but both teams love to play him. So we'll see how they carry it. And we'll have to see indeed. But both of these teams, Indecisive and Dirty Lake and the boys, we we know how good both of them are, but we need a little bit more inside knowledge. Wangle, I'm going to start with you. Please start us off with what you know about Dirty Lake and the boys. So I have, you know, I have uh, knowledge about both of these teams. I played with Dirty D Lake as the original offlaner back when I was an offlaner for some reason. 
Uh, I played with Indecis or I played with Indecisive when we won Fang Booth. I've played with literally everyone on that team but Shin. And I know this is going to be a monster match, but D-Lab, obviously, uh, somewhat, a team that I think people were disappointed with in the Swiss stage. They dropped a couple games to a couple teams that you would have expected them to be. Obviously, they didn't have Lobber there, um, but I think it's very much a team that even in scrims in the past two weeks, have like every team has been saying D-Lab on the rise. They're getting better every single scrim. They're locked in for this finals, and they're back here. It's their third time. They haven't won. They're going to be out for blood. They're locked in, they're loaded, they're tapped in. And Ed, what do you know about this team in Decisive? I mean, we we know Neft is, is a man among men. He is a gamer and a half, so he puts the team on his back a lot. But again, import God King, is he's made the jungle, he lives in the jungle. I mean, this is just a really balanced team overall. There's really no weak point. Um, same over on the D-Lab side, though. So this is going to be a good fight on both sides. This is, this is going to be a fun one to watch. It's definitely going to be a banger of a series to watch. But now it's time to put our predictions in. Wango, I have to start with you. Who is going to win this best of five grand finals? D-Lab or Indecisive? It, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. Obviously, it's NA versus EU. It's the Battle of the Titans. Uh, I'm the classic NA versus EU guy. I'm from NA. I live in EU right now. And I'm in EU right now. And I'm friends with so many people on the team. And I'm gonna have to go with Indecisive. He's locking in Indecisive. That leaves you, Ed, to choose between the two. Who is it gonna be? Who is going to win this best of five? Indecisive or Dirty Lake in the boys? I mean, home court advantage, you know, through and through. I got my boys on D-Lab. I love those guys over there. They've been playing together for a good while here. They are they are gamers. Uh, they've been practicing. I mean, they're doing uh, fake drafts with each other and stuff too. I mean, they've been putting in the time and work and it's going to show today. They definitely have been. And I am also going to lock in Dirty Lake and the boys. I've been rooting for them from the very beginning. Um, I'm from Canada. And so that team has three members in my country. Okay, so we've got Lobber as well as uh, uh, Lakin as well as Toasty and I've got to support them. They've been consistently in the semifinals and the finals. I want to see someone else take the PCC crown and I think it's time for D-Lab to take over. And now it's time to dive into this draft. Wangle, what are you expecting to see from the bands here from both sides? Um... There's a couple things that can go on here. Indecisive, probably going to ban out the Argus. It's their most banned character, something they don't want to go against. Uh, Appy, I think consistently showing, in my opinion, that he is the best mid lane Argus player between all of the top mid laners. Uh, I think he's the first one to like have really figured out how to play that character in the mid lane, how to dominate the map. Toasty as well, uh, obviously very apt in playing the Argus. So I would expect to see an Argus ban there. And on the side of D-Lab, a couple different things. We saw a Grux ban coming out from the Chef's last game for Morose. I doubt we'll see that out here from D-Lab. Um, but maybe something to target Morose or Imports Champion Pools, uh, maybe like a Rampage or general strong picks what are your expectations easy ed is it going to be the same bands you think uh i kind of agree with wangle on it i mean i could i could definitely see an argus coming in early as one of the bands here because both teams like to play him but don't really want to play against him uh we see the quang comes in first on indecisive side so we know that they're trying to uh hinder the the, the offlane role over from d lab but D-Lab countering with the Zaris, so they're looking at each other's strengths and weaknesses right now, and I think these are kind of some targeted bans too. Um, a lot of it's just going to come from the jungle though. We see the Crunch first pick, so there we go. We were talking about how Crunch has been a menace, and we'll see if uh, that continues on that win rate. That's kind of a wild first pick from me. I have 
never in my life seen a crunch top pick. Uh, the Kwong ban obviously targeting Lobber's champ pool. Uh, they don't want Lobber to be able to neutralize that lane. And I think uh, on the sev that Morose will be able to push him in and get and get kills maybe. We see the Argus and the Narbash pickups from D Lab. So the Argus is locked in mid for Appy Picker and the Narbash very early. Uh, I think Dirty Lake and the boys believe Mankyu probably not as. Uh, you know, comfortable on the Richter pick, so they feel that they can just pick the Narbash here and not have to deal with it as much. Grux and FaZe, so we're locking the Crunch jungle and the Grux off lane. Morose, the Grux guy, they don't want his champion pool to get uh, pushed out with the second ban phase, they're gonna lock it in here. Uh, but the phase to allow for Indecisive to have Neft have a super safe duo lane. Yeah, I mean, these picks are coming in fast, so this what this tells me is these teams have been doing their homework. They are really confident on their picks and everything else, too. So the Severog coming in, I think that's really strong over for D-Lab. I mean, it's going to be tough if that's what's going to be the, the offlane role, because, uh, you know, Morose on, on Grux, is he's, he's a menace. So we'll see if Severog can get his stacks in confidently and, and go from there. But the phase, I, I like that pick, especially with uh, Manky looked like he didn't look very comfortable on Decker last game. So they're probably trying to get him away from that. But the TB band coming in, they're trying to get Neft off of his guy. I, I love that idea. They're going to try to force him into Drongo because we know Neft doesn't like to play the Drongo. So... This should be this should be fun. I could maybe even see a Sparrow Phase combo if they go the the protect the president route with uh, Phase and Sparrow. Just let her scale and then Phase press R and they they roll. And Kira lock in from the side of D Lab. The Drongo is up. That is something to note. The Drongo is up. They either want Indecisive to take the Drongo or they're starting to not value it, which is something crazy. Has been picked every single game so far. So Drongo not locked in yet. I know ne it's not Neft's signature pick. I might expect something like a Wraith here. I know Neft really likes his safe lanes. He obviously doesn't have the Twin Blast phase combo, but the phase Wraith combo is just as oppressive. It guarantees the free uh, knock knock on the Wraith. Uh, super, super aggressive lane. Let's him play very safe. And it's the Murdoch pick. No Drongo here in this game. Not even the Wraith. Very surprising. Uh, in my opinion, at least. Um, yeah, going to be very interesting. A lot of what I think uh, this game will come down to is... <gasps> what? <laughs> the Morigesh coming out as the only other mid laner, I think, that plays Morigesh. I'm so excited to see this. It's finally coming out. We You're need to see, see the stats lane. on... Yeah, we need to see the stats on the Mori you're, pick through and through. You're going to see him tournament. build Combustion Wraith leggings. You might call it wrong you are wrong this is the build that you go you max the bomb you go combustion wraith leggings probably tainted third and this is how shin's gonna play it he's obviously gonna there's gonna be uh the ability to catch shin in the mid lane with the long range argus stuns but if shin gets to the two items the kira won't be able to play the game the argus won't be able to play the game if the moragesh is allowed to cast it will just two hit people it'll three hit people with the ult before fights and the, and the Kalari. Kalari for the last pick. Wow, wow. So, I mean, they're, this is kind of a squishier team over for D-Lab that we're seeing. I mean, the Severog is going to have to scale fast, but we know we know North on Kalari. That is, that is one of his strong suits. He loves playing the Assassin heroes. Uh, I, I could definitely feel that Morgesh might have a heck of a time in mid, just constantly getting bullied by the Kalari and the Argus, but we'll see if uh, Shin has anything up his sleeves for that. Mor Morigesh also. Oh, sorry. Real quick. Morigesh very good one, into the yeah. Kalari. Very good into the Kalari indeed. But Wango, <laughs> I got to ask you, you got so much to say about Morgesh. What about that Morgesh and Argus uh, matchup in the mid lane? And how will these two junglers work together to help their mid laner? Uh, so I think around the six spike is when the crunch will start to look mid. Obviously, the Morigesh can get a lot of stuff done in the mid lane. Uh, it kind of comes down to uh, Shin not getting bursted by the stun into Kalari combo. Um, but if Shin is allowed to get, is, if he's allowed to scale a bit, get to the combustion, get to the Wraith leggings especially, uh, if he ever marks the Kalari, the Kalari is going to have so much difficulty playing these fights. The Kalari can't dodge the mark, obviously can't dodge the ult 
and very squishy hero can get uh, bursted down if they're not careful or uh, can get very, very low before fights. It's definitely going to be intense over in that mid lane. But uh, I just want to talk about team comp strategy. This is a hero we haven't seen a lot of um, in the PCC, but indecisive team comp, how does that work for them? And what's their strategy going into game number one, Easy Ed? I think what they're going to do is just try their best to take North on that Kalari out of the game. Uh, Crunch is kind of a counter to Kalari in my opinion, so we'll maybe see some some good plays from from that side. But I I really like D Labs draft here. I think that they have a lot of burst capabilities, and you know as long as that Severog gets big early, I think they are going to be a force for indecisive. Game number one in the grand finals. Ladies and gentlemen, please cheer for your favorite team and who you think will win this first game. Get your points in, get your predictions ready. We're going to send it over to our casters, Ego and F6. Gamers, welcome to the finals of PCC7. You got the E squared combo in the casting booth. It's Ego rocking with you. I'm never rocking alone though, because I got the man, the myth, the legend F6 here with me in the booth. Are you excited to go, man? Oh man, Ego, we've been waiting for the finals all day, all month long, and it's finally coming up with these two Titans ready to battle it out. Dude, I'm so excited for both of these teams. Only one can leave the championship despite both chasing it multiple times. We know the capabilities of these players, and now it really comes down to if they're able to execute here on the biggest stage. And I think they're going to be able to do that. We've seen them through these semis just put on such a high caliber gameplay that I think this is probably going to be the time, the moment for this to go to a best of five to really decide the champions. Dude, best of five would be so exciting to see here. Although I know both of these teams would rather close it out in something more like a 3-0, but the competition has never been steeper. And I'm very much so hoping that we at least see it pushed to a game four or five. And to be honest, F6, it doesn't feel like that's unlikely. Not at all here, Ego. We saw how D-Lab was able to take down the number one seed. Everybody was down indecisive of if they can beat Chefs. They did have an unfortunate event, but they were still able to capitalize on it with a just clean sweep. And these two, I believe, are our top two teams getting ready here for this finals. What happens when an unstoppable force meets another unstoppable force on the way to this point? At least with the top eight, neither one of these teams has seen what a defeat screen looks like. And I know both of them don't want to know. However, taking a moment to look at this composition, Morgesh getting picked up here, F6. That is a spicy pick indeed. We saw Wango talk a little bit about it on the desk, but he is spot on. She's able to burst down pretty much anybody, and unless she gets locked down and killed off first in these team fights, she is going to be the game changer. And I know that Appy Picker is definitely going to be looking to lock her down early, keep her in a jail cell so that she cannot get loose because we have seen what Shin is capable of doing on this pick, absolutely chunking away the HP of anyone who dares stand in front of him. And if Indecisive is able to get to that point in the game, I have no doubt that Shin is going to play a large part in them taking a win. One of our greatest mid laners to date. He's able to match up with anybody. And if anybody can pilot this Morgesh, it has to be him. And when it comes down to it, though, he is going to need to be careful because they do have a Kalari. If they're able to get that Dreadnova to land on top of Morgesh and she's in that vulnerable position, she's going to have a bad day because they do have burst on their side. They have a lot of burst. Kalari putting on a good showing, even in just the more recent games being played within the PCC. So I'm hoping to see a lot more of that within this finals matchup as D-Lab is also going to be looking to bring the Kira on Lakenator into the duo. A little bit of sustain backing him up as Toasty will be piloting the Narbash against what has personally become one of my favorite supports, Man Q on the phase and fighting into Neft on this Murdoch, the long arm of the law and oh so very familiar your tool in the PCC. 
They both have sustain in the duo lane, which is one of the things to highlight, but they have more of a safety net when it comes over to the side of Indecisive. They have that pull to be able to get out. They have that lance beam to be able to cause initiation, but here comes Import on his famous level three minute gank. Yeah, but the pull back in off the tether looks like it may just relegate him to the death screen as Lava's gonna be looking for a way out, but will not find it as we got first blood of the finals. Already with the heat, and that is it. We've talked about it time and time again. Me and you backstage, Ego Import likes to look at that three minute gank into the off lane, and he most of the time finds succession on it, and he's able to succeed one more time. Yeah, and that one more time will be the first time of this finals matchup, giving them a little bit of wind in the sails as Appy Picker is just going to be looking to do a little bit of damage within the mid lane. And now North makes a rotation, but Man Q ready with the phase pool. And that is the escape, and that is the comfortability that's going to allow Neff to be a little bit more aggressive. But Lauber actually a little bit upset looking at this mid lane and Shin with the blink. And Lauber with the blink. Oh, he will not find as the greed gets him killed. It's going to be a 2 old lead some five minutes into the game. What was that? Oh, man. Looking for the blink for blink trade. You thought he was going to be able to capitalize on it. But Shin with the twinkle toe is able to escape and actually pick it back up. Indecisive 2-0. Man, you can do all the damage in the world, but if it is not the entirety of my HP bar, then you better play it a little bit more safe. We see that Blink Tool is also now going to be down for Lobber here on D-Lab, as we know that Import is more than likely going to put some pressure on that fact. A very crucial getaway tool, especially here in the early game, used, and all he got for it was a tally plus one going in favor of Indecisive. And especially when it comes down to the fact that Grux, whenever he's able to use that smash and grab, he's able to cancel that shadow slip away from the Severok. So if he catches it mid and like animation, he's not going to be able to get away. And with that flash down with import on the crunch, they have all the mobility that they need. All the mobility, all the momentum, and later into the game, all the damage. We know the Grux is going to do Grux thing. Crunch, despite being the mental man himself, is going to be looking to recycle some of the HP of anyone who stands in front of him. And if they are able to get Shin onto that two, three item threshold, I mean, hey, it's going to be a hard time avoiding this much CC and this much damage to be able to follow it up as North makes their presence known and gets a little bit of damage onto the mid laner. They're trying to force it out. The blink is down. He's going to be looking mid lane. But one thing he has to be wary of is the fact that she does not need to step up too far. And especially whenever the Argus is playing so far behind, it's kind of one of those telltale signs that, hey, there might be some dangers between these fog walls. So doing a great job there. But here comes Import looking for that gank. Subject comes down, but will not find as we sure to see a double blink. And it's going to be a foregone conclusion that Lopper is going to be the second and third kill to go into the pocket of Indecisive. <laughs> I think he has literally just been the one that they've been targeting. I think Indecisive understands Lauber has such a great game on that Sev, and they're trying to shut it down early, and they are succeeding here. Not only is he playing against one of the worst matchups for him with that Grux, he's also now just getting camped in that off lane. And with the lead that Moreau's now has, he's going to have all free pressure. And I don't think that T1 has long left, especially after the first mini or prime. Yeah, man, and we predicted it a couple minutes ago. Hey, they know that that blink is down. These teams are in full communication, and they are going to use every bit of advantage that you supplied them with. Import, of course, is going to be looking to make that rotation, and even if you're able to use Severox's kit to create a little bit of space, they're more than willing to pick up a blink here if it's going to give them a substantial kill lead. One person that has been a little bit quiet, he is going to be the Kalari, though. We know the North is going to be able to scale and do massive amounts of damage on this pick but i'm wondering if we'll see him pick up a kill sooner rather than later as he makes the rotation on to the mortgage looking to play the space it is going to be shin who's getting bursted down and inevitably will be killed we asked and north answered as he puts d lab on the board oh ho, ho. yes sir that's the caster curse being inevitable to avoid and it's they pick up their first tally mark to get themselves back into the swing of things and without that blink on shin finally able to get it up and that obliterate applying that slow 
the obliterate slowing them down just enough to all but guarantee that kill as d lab is going to be able to shore up some of the damage they were missing within the mid with the rotation coming out of north in order to secure one of those kills lobber making a good effort earlier but not being able to seal the deal will see his efforts rewarded a couple minutes later with the morgash going down but it looks like import has his eyes now on the mini prime f6 they do still have that pressure inside the offline, so this is more viable for them to go after. The Fang Tooth right now is not in their best position. So being able to pick this up early on, if they're able to get it in time to give it over to Morose, that is going to win them for sure that offline. But here comes that rotation from D-Lab. And it's not going to mean much as they throw out a couple of abilities, but are not able to lock down a kill. Lobber now looking for space and a disengage that he will find. While on the back end, Shin gets found out off the back of a rotation, and Lankinator is actually going to be able to lock himself a kill. And that is why he picks up the Kira. We've seen him switch from the Drongo Comfort pick to this Kira. And I think he's just been holding it inside of his back pocket. We've seen already in the semifinals how dangerous he can be, even if he gets the slightest amount of leads. And now that Dirty Lake and the boys are able to pick up that kill, put it on top of Lakinator, we might see a little bit of more pressure coming from this dual lane when it comes towards this mid game. We know that Lakinator can be a win con. You get him a couple more kills like that, he'll be running this game like Usain Bolt first placed every time. But you also got to give these carries the time that they need to be able to develop and get their items online. So maybe Lake can chunk a lot of HP out of this crunch, out of this crux. While on the other side, Murdoch is going to be building to be able to take down targets like that several. And he's able to capitalize that with the Murdoch, right? They're able to get a Lance Beam, able to get a nice knockup. They have that burst damage to use that long arm of the law to just get them down to a certain threshold to allow them to like, hey, I need to get back and keep, be able to keep the pressure on. But it's really going to come down to, though, this next Fang Tooth fight. Let's look at who got that mini or prime buff. It's going to be the Crunch. He's on his red side jungle. He's looking to clear and looking for an opportunity. And right now with D-Lab being a little bit pushed up, right a little bit past that river, might be that calling once this back is done yeah looking to exercise some of that pressure with d lot being pushed up as you said the ward fishing a little bit deeper into their side of the jungle should allow for crunch to be able to make a rotation over there with the mobility he has he's going to be able to capitalize wherever he wants to go which looks like it may be the mid lane as now appy picker is looking to get picked off but the blinking response is going to make sure he's safe that is a huge resource but hello over into the duel lane. We're going to see a big ulti come through as North is going to be able to pick up a kill. Now Neft is going to be the only one left on the edge of that tier one tower as Import is going to now make his presence known. Toasty has a thunk for him to get him to calm down. He definitely had to take a seat there. The drumstick is for everybody and he's able to thwart that there. Huge pickup on the side of Dirty Lake and the boys, but Appy Picker, Blink is forced out, still or Prime buff on top of the crunch. This is still in the favor of Indecisive, even by the littlest of margins. And it's those smallest of margins in which champions are not born, but forged. You have to be able to earn that title as both teams have been oh so very close, but neither have yet been able to win a PCC event. And why not seven? A lucky number for many. This could be the lucky chance for one of these teams. And just speaking based off of that, we know Dirty Lake and the boys, they have been trying and trying so hard to get that number one championship spot. They have not yet to claim it, but the way they're looking today, the way they have been playing, this might be theirs to take. Indecisive, though, are not going to let them go that easily. Yeah, as now we're going to see a thunk coming out of Toasty. A pullback on a man queue is not only going to be able to secure the safety of the carry and Neft, but also will inevitably give him a little bit of healing. As with both of these supports having healing within their kit, it is going to take a little bit of burst and an immediate initiation, maybe off of a rotation, be able to lock down these kills. As D Lab looks like they might freely be locking down a Fang Tooth. It did have a head start on it, but the rotation is coming in hot. Yeah, it is now going to be Shin showing a little bit of face, but with the full disengage of the Song of the People being played and Happy Picker with the long range stun, it looks like they're not even going to have to trade any utility such as a blink to be able to get this objective. The first Fangtooth is soundly going to go in favor of D-Lab. 
And that's what's one of these great things I like to see throughout these competitive play. The way their ability to communicate with each other, hey, let's walk out together. That's probably the most important thing after taking an objective is make sure you're safe and be able to get out. And that was just a well done, well timed and very place of neutral objective. You know, man, a fang tooth feels good, but like you said, a free fang tooth feels great. We didn't have to use any ults, we didn't have to use any blinks. We took it and left. It's like a to-go back because they have a meal on the road. And as they've been able to get the reset with the little hope that they got from it, I'm wondering if we're gonna see an initiation around this next prime spawn. They're gonna have to try and get impact everywhere else, right? This is still now a close game. The neutral objectives are tied up. The kill scores are tied up. It's still in anybody's favor right now. These teams are playing smart. Couple little mistakes were made early on for those kills. But here, they still have a little bit more of an advantage. They still have a little bit more time before Severov becomes a little bit into that scaling and get his staffs online. So if Moroz can get a little bit more of a lead, Maybe get that T1 down on the right side, able to rotate a little bit more, especially for the second Fang Tooth. This might go a little bit towards Indecisive, but if Lauber is able to get back into this game, it might be a way for d -Lab. You cannot let Morose get too comfortable. I mean, he has an advantage immediately and ineptly already, with Lauber getting picked off two times one more of his own prohibition. But if you let Morose on Crux develop a lead, I mean, it's going to be so much more than objectives he's taken. I've seen Morose on this pick be able to take the 1v2 fight comfortably and the 1v3 closely, but still coming out on top with the rotation of his team. And everything that we're seeing now could add up to making a big impact into the late game. And that's all you want from your members, right? To be able to just keep adding throughout the game. Now, Mini Prime is getting ready to get on up. They're looking at Lobber as he makes a mistake. Mini Prime is coming up, but they're looking to put Lobber down as he's going to be forced to use the Colossal Blow to one stick one member and then the Bleak on the back end in order to save him from another. Morose and Import are moving like one being on the map. That is the dynamic duo of Import and Morose. They play together so well. They're able to understand each other, especially on that offlane side of the map. Import able to pick up, get that pressure. And with that blink down, Barber right now is having a tough time in that offlane. The struggle bus is loading at the back of it. You're seeing Severog getting a little bit comfortable, but looking to get off hopefully at one of these next stops as we're going to be hitting the 15 minute mark in this game. Severog, a character that you already touched upon, is going to be able to develop and it's going to be able to be a very impactful force into the late game, but they got to get there first. As other teams have said, the only part of a game that is guaranteed is the early. And with that Meteor Prime, you see that pressure that he's able to put on that T1 in the offlane. Moreau's now comfortably with a two-level lead. It's just not what you want to see. And he's going to be able to take this fight over to Lauber. There's not much that he can do to stop it. Because right now, he's just going to be able to push with that Orb Prime buff. Yeah, being able to get those minions underneath tower and not only get some solid damage onto the tower itself, but on the lobber. He's below the 50% margin as we do see within the far duo lane. It's going to be Man Q and Neft looking to lock down this tower as theirs has also fallen. Hosty had to rotate over towards mid lane and trying to get a little bit of pressure to help out. But what that does is just like put Nicodator in a bad position. And now you're seeing that T1 go down. That is not what you want. This map being opened up like that is just going to allow for Indecisive to get more and more aggressive. And D-Lab right now does not have a way to really stop it. They don't, and that's going to have to be a problem. They need to find a solution to Lakenator. Also, now with that tower down, is going to be freed up to maybe rotate, although I think it is a lot more likely he's going to be looking to keep his CS in check to scale himself into the late game as quickly as he possibly can. Pivot it on to UF6, 3-3. to three. We're nearing 20 minutes into the game. What do you think, as far as the team compositions go, are going to be more heavily fa favored as far as the mid and late game? But when it looks towards it, you have a little bit of that little bit of late game with Toasty and that Severop. Their healing's gonna come online. Severop's gonna get a little bit more tankier, right? They have a little bit in that back area, but at the same time, Import with the corrupts and with the phase being able to pull out, they have such a good early game, they might be able to stop them from even getting to that late parts of it. Yeah, I mean, 
the late game is the place where you want to be. The other team's aware of that. They're going to do everything they can to stop you from arriving there. As we do know, the Fangtooth is likely going to be a large point of contention. Already seeing members of D-Lab migrating their way towards it, or possibly the mid lane as Happy Picker is going to be forced to use his Epoch. Morose is more than willing to wait, but the CC coming out is going to force a bleak out of his teammate as Grux is going to have to do Grux things with Lankinator being able to pick up the kill onto Shin. It is going to be a force call for a retreat on import as he's going to be trying to export himself out of that situation it looks like it is going to be resolved as a 1-0 kill that is going to swing in favor at d lab oh man they were able to get the epoch off there on top of the argus and that bought enough time for them to be able to capitalize on that rotation great job on the big dirty lake and the boys to be able to notice that and they're able to get the kill in their favor yeah, and that's one kill that is going to be able to actually tip the scales just barely as they are now going to have the Fangtooth advantage and the kill one. And after we see the op opposition give up on it, they're immediately going to make a rotation inwards. Argus present. It's going to be the first on the defense if anyone looks for a rotation, but it looks like Indecisive just isn't. Not at all. They actually left Severov to be able to push that off late. He got the T1. He's catching up a little bit in the XP area, able to get those stacks online, even out that off lane. And at this point, it looks like it's still just such a close game. This is exactly what these gamers and these players are looking for. You don't play in one of these tournaments. You don't play MOBAs if you're not looking for the competition and real competitors. Look to find the game where it is at its hottest. And that is the PCC for predecessor. And now both of them have climbed to the mountaintop, but only one of them is going to be able to come down with the trophy right now. They're up there and they're fighting it out. And every decision, every swing, every rotation they make could determine later who comes down with the win. Dirty Lake and the boys looking for an opportunity. North getting a little bit caught out. Yeah, he's going to find some damage and not an opportunity as we're going to see Shin be able to do a little bit of burst. The ultimate is going to come out, but not be enough to kill as we do know that that Morgesh ulti later into the game can just chunk someone for a third of their HP unexpectedly. Yeah, you saw a little bit of there going off. If he wasn't able to have that guillotine up to be able to get out of dodge, he would have been dead to rights for sure. But Dirty Lake and the boys a little bit more in control of this game. They have those two fang teeth to be able to get themselves to get ready to fight for this third one. And if Indecisive gets picked out or is not able to contest that third fang teeth, it is a dangerous game they are playing with that long con. Yeah, this kind of goes against what we expect out of Indecisive, right? Of six, they like to play the slow game, be able to pick themselves up a couple neutral objectives, but especially building on the advantage that the Fangtooth is going to be able to provide not only their rotation speed, their team fights, and overall golden economy. And right now, d -Lab has just dominated the Fangtooth at the very least. They were able to capitalize on the picks. We saw that Indecisive was able to get pressure on the offlane so early on, but were unable to really keep that momentum going. We talk time and time again about the momentum and how it's such a key part in these tournaments, in these games, to keep it and keep pushing on. But with that being lost and pushed over to the side of Dirt Lake and the boys, you're questioning how they're going to be able to get back into the driver's seat. Yeah, man, because right now D-Lab is trying to just push them out of the car, but Indecisive, such a good team of great caliber players, are going to be looking to just get control of that steering wheel to make sure the momentum and the overall game result does come within their favor. Nonetheless, it is understandable. Both of these teams are not looking for a fight right now. If it's there, they're going to take it. If you leave yourself open to a pick, I mean, hey, they'll take the easy dunk but they are trying to accelerate themselves into this late game stage. You take a look over at the crunch build. You guys are probably wondering why that import is going into those moon boots. It's a really good tech. He's going to be trying to be able to use the moon boots to kind of propel himself upwards and dash towards that back line. And once you see those galaxy grooves get online, I think you're going to see a different fighting style coming out of indecisive. Uh, I would call it a little bit of an elevated fighting style, being able to utilize those moon boots as well as the mobility in his kit to literally go over the top of the front line and drop some damage literally and figuratively onto the back line. So that is going to have to be something that Kira and Narbash as well as Argus are just prepared for when these initiations come.
<laughs> Man, it's going to be a sight to see. You're going to be wondering, where do you go? Where do you come from, right? Because he's going to be just aggressive as he wants to be. We see also the Berserker's Axe. And that is one of those key items that Import likes to build on anybody that's able to use it inside of this jungle. It does be able to create a proc. It allows for that movement speed to rotate throughout these fog walls and allows him to be aggressive on these rotations as well. And aggression is something that we know he enjoys a lot. I mean, hey, just as Lobber, he caught the brunt end of some of it within the earlier <laughs> stages of this game, but it's going to have the opportunity to maybe return the favor if he's able to scale in the way that he wants to be able to. Nonetheless, we are going to be able to take a moment to pivot our attention over onto the towers every tier one down, but give it a gander over into the solo lane. That tier two looks like it is awfully close and almost ready to fall. Dev was able to push out that lane. He's able to get pressure, able to stack up to allow a bigger minion push to hit that T2. Still, it's not down yet, but the third Fang Tooth, I want to put our eyes and get ready for this fight. This is a key fight for both teams. Dirty Lake and the boys are fighting for that permanent buff. Indecisive is fighting to be able to get themselves the first Fang Tooth and deny them that ability. Because right now, if they don't take the lead and take the initiative, this might be looking bad for Indecisive. Just looking for 5v5 as we are going to see the Grunge Bull Lobber is going to be isolated away from his team. Playing the Song of his people off the back. He's going to find a fit for him and knock him as it's all over now from the ropes. It is now going to be Lobber onto the engage looking to peel for his team. But more than peel, he will do. He will set them up for a secondary kill. It is going to be a 1-2 to two trade favoring D-Lab. But it's not quite over yet as we're going to see a re-engage. The Thunk is going to come out and fight purchase. That's North is going to be able to fight purchase with his daggers locking down. Nev's life and sending him to the gulag, the green screen, as it is now going to be a one to four trade favoring D Lab. Holy moly, they tried to initiate indecisive, tried to make a decision for themselves, but Dirty Lake and the boys said, No way, Jose. They capitalized on everything, able to get a four man crash thing. Boom, able to separate that, able to create a little bit more space so their damage dealers could get everything they need off. And Lakeinator in that back line just able to free cast. And now they pick up that big prime 24 minutes in. You know, they go to the crash bang, boom, and the boom is for the knockup, but that was a dynamite level explosion of damage that emitted out that gave this team a lot of favor and a lot of pressure, as now they just have this heating and foundation set to be able to possibly run away with this game. It's going to be a kill lead. It's going to be a neutral objective lead. It's going to be D-Lab who are pulling ahead at 25 minutes in. They are on a mile stretch with that third Fang Tooth. We talked about it and highlighted a little bit beforehand. If they're able to get it, it is a permanent buff. They were able to pick up another Prime there. And then now they have that just permanent. It's essentially another item inside the pockets of all members. They're able to get a gold lead and they're able to get that back off. And now they're looking for these T2s. Pivoting the attention over to you, man, I want to get into your mind, kind of get a little bit of an idea of the intel that I know you have on the game. Indecisive have dropped the objective lead, they dropped the kill lead, but the game's not over until the big lady sings and it's awfully quiet on the battlefield. I want to ask you, F6, what does Indecisive need to do to put themselves back in control of this game? They need to make a decision. I know we joke about it all the time, but they need to make a decision on who they want to target when they want to engage they have to make sure they're on the right spot to do so a lot of these times they're taking engages in these small corridors and they don't have too much for it yes they have that gruff pull but when it comes down to it that crash bang boom is more dangerous than the grux in those tight lower corridors they also have the argus and lakinator just being able to free cast in the back line is just a huge impact towards their team chemistry and they need to be able to get those picks and be able to get over to the back line to stop them from doing that damage as we're going to see now, Argus, as you pointed him out, the Zionic Obliterator eviscerating some of Import's HP from such a safe distance. As also, it is going to be D-Lab kind of getting multicultural, pushing up in different avenues and different places on the map and being able to lock down that tier two that was already so low. And now they're looking through the way towards this mid T2. And after this, they can still have the ability to siege. They have the extra timer, the extra 30 seconds on that or prime. So they could take a little bit of slow here, push for a siege. And if they're able to get down an inhibitor so early on, 
it's going to be a huge impact. It's going to put a lot more pressure on top of Indecisive to where they have to defend an extra lane. But Indecisive need to come up with a big defense win to stall this game out. And it is going to be a nod over to the logo as we speak about pressure because Indecisive is just being sunk beneath the waves one at a time. They can spill in and if they come in all at once, I mean, your ship just might be sunk. They are surrounded on all sides by darkness and they have to hold their breath and hope that air is coming. That's now we're going to see an engage possibly coming out of Lobber onto import. We talked about earlier, he may be wanting to get it back and this could present him with an opportunity to but with the long armor, the law, as well as the Morgan Schultz coming out, it looks like it's still going to be a call for a disengage. They tried to push towards that inhib to take it down, but that was just a great defense, right? We needed Indecisive to come out with a defense to stall them as long as possible. Want to get another run at these big objectives, the Ore Prime, the Primordial Faint Dude that is coming up next. This might be the way for them to get on into it. We know Import is one of the best at just stealing objectives away from other teams, and that he has done it before against D-Lab. If he's able to secure one of these objectives, they're right back into this game. The man is a phantom thief. He's in, he's out, and he can absolutely turn the pace and the heart of the opposition upside down if he's allowed to lock down some of these objectives, steal or not. I'm kind of hoping here as we make our way onto the 30 minute mark of the game to see some more confident engages and initiations from Indecisive like we saw earlier in the game. I want to see that combination of Crunch as well as Morose on this Grux pit looking to maybe get a pick and following it up with some of the damage that comes out of this mortgage, that comes out of this Murdoch as that may be able to at the very least give them some momentum, but at the most give them the advantage they need to lock up an unjust I mean, it comes down to the fact that really Crunch is the only one that's able to hard aggress on, right? The Grux can easily be body blocked out from doing what he needs to do. Crunch is going to try and use those Moon Boots like we talked about to get towards the back line. But if he's unable to really get that off, they're just sitting ducks. They can't really necessarily fight too well to front to back. Meanwhile, on the side of D-Lab, they have that sustain that's towards everybody. Yes, they have the phase on the side of Indecisive, but that's only a one-man heal. And with that Narbash, we talked about the Crash Bang Boom, how impactful that really is to the words this match. And it's just so big right now, they need to find a way to get around them. Yeah, you cannot take half-cocked engages onto this team. As you pointed out, this Narbash is going to supply them with way too much value. Yeah, we burst it down a lot of them, and it was oh, so very close, but close. Is never enough on this size of a stage as Narbatch is literally going to be able to click a singular button and heal his team up to full if you give them a crucial resource and that's going to be time enough time as we look for that engage colossal blow it is going to go up at the subject gate. It is going to be a little bit offline now, fighting within the court. It is going to be Toasty that's going to be able to hit up the knock up onto Morose, who is now going to be looking for more until Import finds himself engaged and exported onto this fight as Lincolnator is going to be able to drown the engager for Indecisive. The spin to win through the wall to be able to pick up that kill. And now they have the numbers advantage. They have the jungler's advantage. And with that primordial faint teeth, oh, this might be it for Indecisive. The Psionic Obliterator is going to be online as now we see Morose looking for to engage onto him. Neftu is going to be able to take out the enemy team's carry, but being able to separate the space now, we're going to see Narbash doing what Narbash does, making the tempo of this initiation beat to the beat of his own drum as the Epoch comes out, but Shin is still going to be dropped by Appy Picker, who picks up a kill. They went back to the mid lane to fight there, and they were able to pick up a Neft. Oh my goodness, Neft just able to pick up a Lakinator there. Sorry about that. But man, they had the opportunity to look at the Primordial Fang Tooth. Yes, they did have to probably defend and might have to turn, but they have everything they need. They have the sustain, and the fact that they went back to the mid was probably a bad call for them, especially if it's going to give Indecisive more time to catch back up. Yeah, that's going to be some gold in their pocket, but even more so taking the carry out is going to alleviate a lot of the kill pressure within that engage or just generally on the map for the time being 10 to 5. The lead still evidently being in favor of D-Lab. Indecisive though, very well known for being able to claw back in if you give them an avenue to. As we see the subjugate comes out and it does land Argus, the Sonic Obliterator, looking to get some solid damage and as the Colossal Flow is going to reset the positioning of Morose, who is listening to his favorite song, it's staying alive as he is going to be able to avoid the abilities of the damage coming out of two while Import is looking for an engage of his own. 
Oh, Morel's able to be get with the Twinkle Toes to get out of there. He definitely was in a bad position, but with the amount of defense he has right now, he's able to get that pressure away. But the guillotine, not enough quite yet as they look for another opportunity on Diva. And now they just may be looking for this neutral objective as the primordial blaze is a key component in being able to cook up your opposition. It is going to be import Shin, Neft, Man, Q, Morose, all making a grouping on the other side of the map as they are thinking that this may be a relatively free objective. It's going to be a tidal wave of damage of the blue side of D-Lab making a rotation. Looking, lurking as both teams are getting ready to clash here today. It's going to be the subjugate now coming down, playing the space close. It's going to be import aggressing onto Lava as Morose is just getting eviscerated onto the back end. Lincoln is going to be able to find himself another kill as Neft is looking for a way out. The positioning for the big prime is now going to go firmly into the hands of D-Lab. Oh, man. They were just able to put Morose there apart. He just did not have enough to get away. Now, with that sustain, they're going to be able to call for this big prime. Import is still here, though. Like we said before, he's going to try to take this away. Moon boost because he's fine, but it's not going to be enough. And he got pretty high, but he's going to be sent higher. I'm talking about the heavens. As now North is going to be looking for that engage. He did well fight it. As that's not going to be one. That's not going to be two. Gamers, it's the first ace of the finals. My, they just picked them apart. He tried to steal. Not enough. Dirty Lake and the boys picking up that prime. Look at those timers. Look at those cooldowns as they push towards this core. They are making a run. They're not making a run for the enemy team. They're not even making a run for the core. They're making a run for the championship as it's going to be Lobber, Happy Bigger, Lakeinator, Toasty. Who strike first? Game one goes over to D-Lab. These guys came here to play today. I'm telling you, Ego, Dirty Lake and the boys are a different team. This is their PCC, and they're not going to let anybody get in their way. This is the terror of progress. This team has been grinding, growing, evolving, and they're not a Pokemon, but they've unlocked a new ultimate move, man. And we saw them utilize it within game one. However, we're in a best of five set here with the E squared combo and the casting desk. And I'm wondering if they have what it takes and indecisive to make the adjustments necessary to put themselves on the winning board. I think they do, but I do know who wants to take a look and see if we're right, as this is going to be the analyst desk. Welcome back to the desk, everybody. We just watched game one of the grand finals between Dirty Lake and the boys versus Indecisive. Both of these teams have so much respect for each other. They respect the damage, the engages from both sides. And I believe we were 20 minutes past and there were only four or three kills from both sides. And when you're playing at such a high caliber, you have to be playing at this level of mastery because one wrong move and any one of these teams can run away with the game. And it was Dirty Lake and the boys is able to secure game number one. My name is Triple G. I'm back with Big and Easy and the Wangler here to break down this game. All right, Wangle, what just happened in game number one? Uh, it started out really, really strong for the side of Indecisive. Obviously, they took Lobber down three times uh, in the early game, got Morose like, a pretty good lane but they weren't able to convert anything once it got to the mid game. Like they ended up with five deaths overall and four of them were on Lobber. And unfortunately it just didn't work out. Their strategies from indecisive side just wasn't enough to take game number one, but big and easy. What happened? What went wrong for indecisive there? How did I mean, I, D lab win? I don't think they capitalized enough on, uh, on Lobber struggling so much uh, so early. I mean, they they should have just kept pressuring that lane. And I mean, North was just doing what he does and make play after play after play. And I think they just let them scale up and they, North just carried. He definitely did because game number one goes to Dirty Lake and the boys. Who emerges victorious in this grand finals? Is it D-Lab or Indecisive? Please grab your favorite drink because we got ourselves a game number two on our hands. We'll be right back.